Good morning and welcome to another Playtime edition of Elmira Baptist Church's Daily Update. Again, I am here at uh, the Elmira Baptist Church's building where we will not meet inside tomorrow, but we will meet outside, meeting outside at 10 o'clock. I hope that you'll join us. Remember, you don't have to get out of your car. We'll have some spaces reserved there near the concrete pad where you can sit and watch. Here's the quote for today. Too long have we thought of prayer simply as a means for the supplying of our need in life and service. May God help us to see what a place intercession takes in his divine counsel and in his work for the kingdom. And may our hearts indeed feel that there is no honor or blessedness on earth at all equal to the unspeakable privilege of waiting upon God and bringing down heaven, bringing down from heaven, and of opening the way on earth for the blessings he delights to give. What an honor to have power with God in heaven over souls and to obtain for them what they do not know or think. That was Andrew Murray. It's a long one, but I want to read it to you again. Too long have we thought of prayer simply as a means for the supplying of our need in life and service. May God help us to see what a place intercession takes in his divine counsel and in his work for the kingdom. And may our hearts indeed feel that there is no honor or blessedness on earth at all equal to the unspeakable privilege of waiting upon God and bringing down from heaven and of opening the way on earth for the blessings he delights to give. What an honor to have power with God in heaven over souls and to obtain for them what they do not know or think. Again, Andrew Murray. This is your daily Elmira Baptist Church update for Saturday, August 1st, 2020. It is a new month and we have some birthdays today. Today, August 1st, is Christina Bean's birthday. I hope you have a great day, and we're glad that you're a part of our church. We're also glad that Rick Marfield is a part of our church and that Niku uh, Avalos is part of our church. They have birthdays coming up in this coming week. We have a special, a very special anniversary this week also. Uh, this week will be Henry and Dora Valles's 67th anniversary 67th anniversary i was just reading this morning about a fella he just passed away his wife and him celebrated their 71st anniversary recently i hope henry and dora that you make it to 71 years together what a what a blessing these marriages that have stood the test of time and are uh, symbols are reminders of God's grace that would help each one of us in our marriages. Now we're going to do things a little differently. In just a, a, a few minutes, maybe an hour, uh, WT is going to be here. He's going to record a Sunday school lesson for you. For, for, the, for you. Uh, he's going to record that Sunday school lesson today. I will post it so that tomorrow it's available at 11 o'clock in the morning. Now you say, why 11? Well, if you're like me, uh, Sunday mornings, I, I don't prefer to get up any earlier than I, I have to get up, and I'll still be up early. Uh, but uh, that way, you can come to the service at 10, and then go home and take some time to watch WT's uh, Sunday School lesson. So that's tomorrow morning uh, at 11 that I will post that on... There's the train. What a beautiful sound. Someone called me this week and they said, I heard the train go by. We were meeting outside. It's even more pronounced. I heard the train go by. What a happy memory. Now that's taking something that could discourage us and turning it to good. So praise the Lord for the sound of a train. So tomorrow, uh, 11 o'clock, I'll post WT's Sunday School lesson. Now at 10 o'clock, we're going to meet. We are going to meet. We're going to be outside on the concrete pad. We're going to have people parked uh, next to us there. And we will have a children's church. They're going to meet back here on the lawn in, in the back here. There's a little bit of uh, shade there. 
And uh, you're welcome to come, you're welcome to bring guests. We'll be doing some singing. Then at five o'clock in the evening, we're also going to meet. Five o'clock in the evening, and I anticipate that at five o'clock in the evening, we're gonna be meeting on the grass in the back. Uh, there'll be some shade for us there on the, in the back, and also um, uh, it's a little more protected. The three walls of the building bring a little bit more protection from the wind. So 10 o'clock in the morning, out there on the pad, on the concrete pad. 11 o'clock in the morning, we'll post on Facebook, the Facebook page, and on Sermon Audio, uh, WT's Sunday School lesson, and then five o'clock in the evening, we'll meet back here on the, on the grassy section for an evening service. I'll be speaking tomorrow morning about revival, and I really ask you to be there, uh, or if you cannot join us, that you watch online uh, the, the message about revival. This, is, this really needs to be the heartbeat of our church, and we'll talk more about what that means tomorrow, but revival. Five o'clock in the evening, I'm going to be talking about marriage and our commitment to marriage. I think this is one of the answers for America is a, a renewed focus, a renewed commitment to the vows that we take when we uh, marry that person that God has intended for us for life. And if you say, well, I'm not sure God intended me to be married to my spouse. Well, uh, it's a little late for that. Uh, <laughs> But we'll talk about that too tomorrow. So you be back 5 o'clock in the evening or, again, watch it on Facebook if you would like. Psalm 61 today for our Bible study. Psalm 61, a couple of verses here. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee, to, unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Then lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. These verses became very real to me when I was going through a very difficult time in Mongolia. I'm separated from my parents, my loved ones, people that care deeply about me. Uh, my wife has always been a great help to me, but there are some burdens on my heart that sometimes I don't even know how to express to my wife. And I saw this first, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And I hope that that encourages you this morning, because I think a lot of us at times are overwhelmed. I met with a group of pastors on Thursday morning, pastors here in the California area and uh, every one of us had stories about how things were turned upside down suddenly in our churches because that's just the way what we're going through right now I talked to someone today someone today that had a family member diagnosed with the coronavirus not here in California but out of state and it's easy to be overwhelmed but when my heart is overwhelmed I pray lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Now, I, I think there's been, in my mind, there's been five stages to this uh, pandemic uh, and the response to it, to this crisis. The first stage, of course, was pandemic panic. That's when everyone rushed out to the stores and bought a bunch of items, some of which they didn't even need, and now they have uh, whole rooms full of items that they don't need. It's strange to me because just at the time when we should have been social distancing, we're all running to the store without masks, without anything, uh, trying to buy up supplies. So that was the pandemic panic. That lasted maybe a week, 10 days, and then pandemic frustration began to set in. Pandemic frustration is when you say, why are things going back to normal? Why, why do we have to keep doing that? Why do we have to wear masks? Why do we, why do we have to uh, socially distance? Why can't we go to the store anymore without a mask on? Why can't we meet at the park together? All these why, 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 why? That's the frustration, excuse me, the pandemic frustration that began to set in. But you get to a point that I have seen called pandemic fatigue. Pandemic fatigue is when you say, I'm just not doing this anymore. 
I was listening uh, to a lady say this uh, recently. She said, I, I just, we're not doing it anymore. She's from Orange County. Evidently, some of the people uh, she was talking to were from Orange County. She said, we are not going to do this anymore. We've been told we can't go to the beach. We're not going to do, we're not going to follow that. We're going to go to the beach. We've been told we can't meet as a church. We're just going to meet anyway. We've been told we can't go to the park. We're paying for these parks. We're going. That's pandemic fatigue. Then there's pandemic exhaustion. You've gone through the panic, you've gone through the frustration, you've gone through the fatigue, and, and now, frankly, you're just exhausted. You don't even wanna think about it anymore. You take a deep breath and you hope that if you can just get through a few more days, things are gonna go back to normal. And then some of us go on to a fifth phase of this, that I call pandemic rage. Pandemic rage, you, you just, everything makes you angry. You watch the news, it makes you angry. You talk to your spouse, it makes you angry. You would deal with your kids, it makes you, everything makes you angry. Pandemic rage, how is this different than the frustration? Well, the frustration usually goes, why do we have to do this? Why do we have to do that? But rage doesn't even care why anymore. It just becomes angry. That's not the response that God has for us. It's not the response that God wants us to give to this. What he wants us to say is, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Again, hear my cry, O Lord. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. He's talking about when you're at the extreme point in your life, when my heart is overwhelmed, Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That should be our prayer. Yeah, we've all experienced people who've gone through the, the panic, the frustration, the fatigue, the exhaustion. Maybe they've reached the pandemic rage point. We don't have to do that. We don't have to go through those stages. We didn't have to go through the panic stage or the frustration stage or the fatigue stage or the exhaustion stage. And we certainly, God doesn't want us in the pandemic rage stage. God wants us to come to him. When my heart is overwhelmed, God, Father, Abba, would you lead me to the rock that is higher than I? I, I love that thought in the scripture. It's in Ephesians also of God setting us in high places. Uh, Isaiah 40 verse 31 says he'll give us wings as eagles. Here it says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. We're set up high. We're above those circumstances. We're above the situation. We are not going to let what's going on around us cause us to respond in a sinful and selfish way, focused on me and what I want. Because God's led us to a rock that's higher than I, because he's given us wings as eagles, because he's placed us in Christ in heavenly places. And we don't have to be under the weather. We don't have to be buffeted by our circumstances. He leads us to a rock that is higher than I. That's why we worship him. God, God is not threatened by our current circumstances. He's not wondering what he's going to do. He's not digging through his lists of plans. No, God's always been in control. That's why we worship Him. And tomorrow's another chance to join other people in lifting our worship to the Lord. It's a chance to show this community all around us that there's a God in heaven, and we love Him, and we just want to praise Him. So tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, don't miss it. We'll be meeting out here. You can bring your car. Just stay in your car. Whatever the Lord leads you to do, you can watch from home. It will be live streamed both 10 o'clock. Don't forget the 11 o'clock will only be live streamed. WT teaching a Sunday school class, 5 o'clock in, in the evening. Don't miss it. Praise and worship the God who is, who is in control of all things with us. Worship with us tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Until then, just want to remind you, when your heart is overwhelmed, God can lead you to the rock that is higher than you are.